Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfred here. Of you, me, and Cicely. We have a great show for you today. We're going to have a fava bean stew recipe that's going to be so easy and yummy for you. We're also going to go to Scala de Turkey, show you what we ate over there in San Leone. And what else? We're going to see, listen to a really inspirational guy that's a real good friend of Alfred and Esther and the Sicilian Project the director of the Babylonia Language School, Alessandro Adorno in Taormina, which is, I guess you could say this school is like the Harvard of language Italy in, of, of for language schools, in my, my own opinion. Really? And we have something else we're going to talk about. What? Besides that and that and that, there's one other thing. What is it, Esther? All right, take a listen to Alessandro and what he said about our beloved Sicily. So... Sicily. Yeah. Sicily. Sicily. A place of contradictions. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Why? Yes. Well, just look around. Uh, um, this is a place uh, where fire wins over water. Uh, when I say that, I mean that, uh, for example, look at the Aeolian Islands. You see those volcanoes coming up from the water and volcanoes are fire, and the fire winds over the water. Look at the caponatina in uh, cooking, sour and sweet together. Look at the uh, Etna eruptions that destroy, that can, be, can destroy things, but on the same time, the ashes are the best fertilizer. And so we grow beautiful uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff. Look at the mafia and anti mafia. Uh, unfortunately, Sicily uh, is um, associated with mafia. But people do not think enough that uh, most of uh, the people who fight against the mafia are Sicilians as well. You so said 99% of the people. Who died? Who died from mafia? Sicilians. Fought the Sicilians. Yeah, they are not. They don't come from another world. They are Sicilians. They are brave, courageous, um, proud Sicilians that want to get this uh, island rid of this uh, cancer. And um, but the spotlight is there. It's not on these uh, on these guys. So, yeah, a, a, a land of contradiction because uh, uh, you probably know that Italy uh, has um, more or less 70% of the UNESCO protected uh, monuments and beauties. Most of them, they are in Sicily. We have beautiful towns uh, from Agrigento, Syracuse, Palermo, Catania, Noto, Modica, and so on and so over. Architectural jewels but at the same time, you move a little bit further away and you see construction speculation with very ugly neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is Sicily. Sicily is, uh, um, again, a beautiful island. It's an island uh, we all love. But it's, a, how can I say, it's a hard taste. It's not a taste for everyone. And you need to, uh, to come here to really experience what is all about, you know, and not just reading the stereotypical uh, comments about, you know, about Sicily. And this is again, well, we hope will be finally our goal, what it is our goal, what it is our mission. How do, you think, how, how do you think that can be done? I think it can simply be done by everyone daily engagement. You know, just do uh, what you have to do in your private and public life uh, uh, um, as it should be done. We should uh, do that uh, with uh, honesty, integrity, and even proud of our history. And I think that probably a bit more investment should be done on Sicilian kids about learning more about their own culture they should know more about their history. What do you want the world to know about Sicily? I would like very much the world to stop associating uh, Sicily and use the word Sicily as a synonymous of mafia. I think that uh, this is obviously 
uh, a big issue here. And as I said before, most of the Sicilians fight against it. And unfortunately, some of them even died because of it. And they were Sicilians, not from Mars or Venus. But I like uh, to go around the world. And when I say I'm from Sicily, I wouldn't like people to say, oh, okay, then you are a mafioso. Uh, I would like uh, people to say, oh, you are from Sicily. Oh, the land where the uh, three monotheist religions were living together. The first real melting pot society in history where uh, Muslims, Christians, Jews were living peaceful together and bringing up beautiful culture, beautiful monuments and so on. I like people to say, oh, Sicily, where the poetry was born. Does anyone know that the sonetto was invented by the Sicilian poets in the court of Frederick II? The same sonetto that made the Tuscan poets so worldwide known. Does anyone know that the first uh, movie with uh, under the water filming was made in Sicily? Does anyone know that the first uh, um, person who put the oral law uh, into written codes was in Sicily. Does people know all of that? No. The only, people, the only thing that people know about Sicily is mafia. And, uh, and we don't want to neglect that. We all fight that on a daily basis. But Sicily is so much more. And, um, and my wish is that uh, uh, when my son will travel around the world and say, I was born in Sicily, he doesn't have to uh, listen to, uh, to stereotypes. I hate stereotypes. You know, Alessandro talked a little bit about how important it is that the youth of today, the generation of today, learn about history, about the culture of their own country. And I think that's true all over the world. I hooked up with uh, Alessandro about a decade ago, a long time ago, thanks to Dr. Donna Marie Kelly from Massachusetts, a, teach, a professor in what once Institute in Boston, who connected up with the Sicilian Project, and they trained hundreds of our students in Tarmina, Giardini Noxus, Trapadello. They did a summer camp for us. And those kids really, really got the benefit from that program. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, we have a nonprofit called thesicilianproject.com. It's a 501c. And what we used to do is teach English free to Sicilian kids to help them in that area. Of course, now with COVID, we've shifted a little bit and have been giving um, funds to churches and nonprofits helping during COVID. And now with the Ukraine uh, situation, we've shifted again and now are helping organizations that are doling out help, medicine, food, and all types of things to be shipped to areas like Poland to help with the Ukrainian refugees, who, by the way, there's been about 10,000 who have arrived into Italy uh, and a few hundred to Sicily. So far. There's going to be a lot more. So if you can do us a favor, please, I'm going to give you a few ways that you can donate to the Sicilian Project, and we're transparent. It's all going to go out. You could do it, number one, right at the website, the www.thesicilianproject.com. That's number one. Number two, we're having a huge Facebook uh, uh, fundraiser. fundraiser. We've already raised about almost 2,000 U.S. dollars. Yeah, if you dollars. go to Alfred Zappala's Facebook, it's right there. It's right there. And then number three, you can mail a check. And I'm going to make sure that Esther puts the address of the Sicilian Project in, yep. the, in the notes below. And this is going to help the, the refugees not only there who are arriving into Poland, but also obviously Here. in Sicily. And you know, they're doing quite a bit, not only peace marches all over Sicily, but also even at the Catania airport, they're setting up a reception center for people yep. arriving for yep. Ukrainians. So Sicilians, Italians are united as is Europe. You know why? It's because Sicilians have been oppressed for millennia. And there's a certain openness in Sicily for those who are oppressed. 
And boy, these people right now are the epitome of being oppressed in my view. So as many of you know, we went to Agrigento for a road trip to do a couple of shoots, Porto Empodecle, and also I went to Scala dei Turchi, beautiful, beautiful area in the town of Real Monte, which is right outside of Porto de Empodecle. And you know, it's become quite a touristy site, very, very stunning over there. But it was made famous, Alfred, because of Andrea Caminelli's uh, movie, Commissioner Montalbano. It's one of the scenes there. You know, if you can't walk good <laughs> or climb down steep hills, hills good, stay at the top. Okay? Because she came back. Huffing she, and puffing. <laughs> huffing, literally huff, well, huffing and puffing, and she's in really good shape. Well, it's quite steep, but, you know, you can take the stairs all the way down, and then you have to go up. There's several stops that you can make, so if you can, go down there. But I have to tell you, it was much, much, much worth the effort to go down there. It was a little bit windy when I was there, but the views, not my first time, but always a wow moment. The ride in and the ride out is beautiful as well. Yeah, And it's a great part. It's a great part. You come in through the port. It's a great ride. It's a great take. I enjoyed myself even up top. I was talking to lots of folks. None of them, by the way, were Italian. They were all, they were all uh, tourists who were here. No one seemed to have any worries about anything. And uh, a lot of people from the Baltics, a lot of people from the EU here, Germany, Austria, Belgium. I talked to a whole bunch of people. Definitely put it on your list. And put it on your list. It's a great take. The walk up here or down there is quite challenging. But look at this beauty. Of course, over there in the province of Agrigento, in the little town of San Leone, right outside of the main city of Agrigento, we had some great meals. Take a look. This is the caponata with the pesce spada, and I've been looking forward to this. This looks much more like the caponata I'm used for. Okay. Now is the big test. I'll tell you what, this looks pretty good if you ask me. It's really good. It's served warm, just the way I like it. And this definitely has the agrodolce flavors that I really love, that's sweet and savory. And not only the eggplant, but they have capers here and some pieces of swordfish right there. I'm impressed. Very impressive. Really? They All right. have the celery, excuse me. They have olives in here, just the way I like it. And also some pine nuts. So this is a oh. typical fish caponata. Bunsta, give it a grade, one to 10, quick, quick. 9.5. Get out of here, seriously. From, compared to the other day, 9.5. No, how about a 995? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Now that looks good as well. We just had some salads. All right, Alfred, I tried it last time. Your right. turn. Here we go. You think I'm like Esther? I give him high marks? I don't give him anybody high marks. They look pretty good. They have a nice fishy aroma and taste. <laughs> Tanya. Tanya. Tanya? <laughs> Tanya? And look at the pizza. Pizza. Pizza siciliana. Sopra? Sopra c'è della melanzana, della cipolla, del pecorino. Eggplant, uh, onions, pecorini. Olive. Buono. Olives. Pomodoro e mozzarella. Grazie, Joy. Prego. I'm giving this thing. A, I'm gonna give this thing a great. Notice that they don't cut it. Most of the pizzas they don't cut because this is what they call allegedly a single serving. And instead of me getting a margarita today, because this is a quasi expensive joint, I wanted to taste it. Now, it is a, a little bit of a fancy. 
place. Yeah. Okay. What do we so have? What I'm doing is I'm cutting it. Uh, looks like style. looks like they have a lot of mozzarella on there. This is heavily sauce too, just the way you like it. Well, and you know why I'm good. noticing this? What? Because I make your own pizza and I know how you like it. It's okay. Let's see. It's let's, not let's, Ben. You forgot to say Ben Cotto. Well, that's okay. We'll see how it tastes. It's got a little bit of olive, a little bit of uh, Mulanjana. I'm going to give this a grade from 1 to 10 in just one second. <laughs> Sauce is good, not great. 7.5, not bad. I like it. And that's a good grade. <laughs> Getting a C plus is righteous. You know, Lester, right in front of the restaurant is a pedestrian walkway. They call it the Lungamare. So it's a beautiful stretch over the air with beautiful beaches and shops and... Several restaurants, several cafes, several Lido's. Um, and the beach over there is not pebbly, it's nice and smooth, and there's actually a walkway uh, where you can, no cars are allowed, also bikes over there, and I took a beautiful little walk the next morning. It is quite a place to visit. It's a very underrated place. Yeah. That whole sure. area. One thing we learned is that we're going to bring a group down there, because she's been bugging me about staying in Greater Agrigento, but this little uh, San Leone and the Porta that we went through, that's a nice convenient area, and the hotel that we stayed, those boys did a hell of a job for us. Yeah. So I'm, I'm And even I'm driving board. around the area, you know, you have the temples right there, and you're driving from the hotel to somewhere, and there are the Valley of Temples. It's quite a remarkable place. It's, it's almost it's unbelievable it's that you're seeing all these things as you drive by, which, by the way, the drive there and the drive back to Catania is just spectacular. That's what she says. She's in the she's in the passenger side <laughs> on her internet, as George Bush would say. I'm going burr, 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 the whole and time. And taking wing. videos for and you. Taking videos. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice the top with a uh, southeast crater collapsed, it's really pronounced in this direction. Huh? Yeah, her topography it looks like Twin Peaks now. <laughs> her topography definitely has changed in the past two years since. February 2021, she's been erupting quite a bit, but boy is she majestic. Next, we have a little recipe for you, fava bean stew. All the ingredients and how to make it, right here. This is what the fava bean looks like, unshucked. These are kind of long too. And here are the ingredients, of course, fava beans, peas, onions, parsley, garlic, EVOO, salt and pepper, and an option for hot pepper flakes. Okay, here we go. A little bit of EVOO. Where's this one from, Matt? This one is from Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the one from Piazza Marina. All right, so you got to put you got to put a healthy, generous helping, healthy coating. A help, a help, a helpful <laughs> thing of, uh, yeah, and your onions. onion, your onion. You can put even more onions, garlic. Garlic. Now you know Saint Giuseppe Day, Saint Joseph's Day on March nineteenth. There's a very popular um, dish that they eat here. It's called maku, and it's basically Fava beans, fennels, and they're splendid. That's what you eat. A lot of fava bean foods during uh, San Giuseppe. That's the, the San Giuseppe. Salt. Red pepper flakes. Okay, black pepper, of course. Black pepper. Because Beans black pepper black. accentuates uh. every meal, every dish, right? All right, then you wait a few seconds and add the beans. And also the peppers. The peppers. Okay, here's the thing. You see the soup? This is what you call a, a soup uh, spoon. It's also good when you go on a diet and you want to eat soup, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so what you're going to do is you're just going to thoroughly mix these ingredients right now. 
you're going to cover these with water. Not the whole bowl. You're not making a soup, you're making a stew. Bring this to a boil first. So you put the flame on high, and when it's boiling, you put it on simmer. So right now, we're going to wait for it to get boiled. You know, during the Lent season, this is a great dish also to eat on Fridays. The health benefits of this and baba beans are unbelievable. You have tons of immune-fighting nutrients, vitamins B, potassium. You're going to reduce the heat, Al, because yeah, now I'm it's boiling. I'm going to reduce it now. I'm going to put it to a simmer. And by the way, Esther, at this stage right here, at this stage right here, some people can, if they wanted to turn this into a soup, they could, simply by putting chicken stock in and add vegetables at this time. And or you vegetable stock. Or vegetable stock. But right now, we've got this on simmer for 20 minutes. Okay? And here we go. Garnish it with a little bit of olive oil. And parmigiano. Raggiano. Looks good. I just grated it. A little parsley or basil, right, Alfred? Mm hmm. Or both. Or both. Here we go. And a little bit of vino, too, right? Salute a tutti. Now, this is what you call a Un super, pranzo. super healthy meal. And the vino just adds even a little bit more to it. Bon appetito, everyone. Homemade fava bean soup, perfect during Lent. Even if you're vegan, this is excellent. Or any time of the year, a great healthy meal. Add a glass of red wine, and you're all set. You know, E, this recipe that I did, there's a 10 million variations, but this happens to be the recipe of my late grandmother, Augustina Lascola. Zappala, who was born in Kanikati, all right? And we had a farm uh, in uh, the a section of Merrimack Valley, and my grandfather, Alfio, used to plant all the same crops, pretty much, that I used yeah. to see in Sicily. But I can remember vividly with my grandmother picking fava, because we had fava growing, okay? And she had that mapina, you know, the apron, and she, oop, and, and she would have that, and she had that mapina, the apron, folded and as she was uh you know picking up the five she would put it in the her her mm -hmm. uh, the mapina and did you help shuck i didn't yeah i we all all the whole family shucked but typically what the rule is is that one kilo or about two pounds once you take the the skins off uh, makes about one pound of fava so what you saw in that recipe was one pound of fava now that was a stew you could make it into a soup like i said you just put more water in, put your veggies in. You or can whatever. have it with pasta, too. You can have it with pasta. If you have it with pasta, you don't put water in. What you want to do is you just want to cook, uh, you want to cook the, uh, you know, kind of like brown, so to speak, the uh, the beans, okay? And last thing that we didn't show in the video is I eat my fava tepid. So after she finished, uh, you know, after we shut it off, I let it sit for 20 minutes to get the absor moisture absorbed uh, absorbed into the fava. And with a glass of red wine, I'm telling you right now, that was a hell of a meal I had yesterday. I have quite the memories with my grandmother shucking peas and some kind of beans in Hungary, too. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's just a, it's a very you know, therapeutic type of a thing. You eat, you eat with your mouth, but you really <laughs> eat with your eyes, and you eat with your memories. It's kind of putting all your senses together. And fava, in sure. this time of the year... For me, is I'll have it two or three more times this well, month. Well, it's the period, ways. San Giuseppe, March 19th. Yeah, yeah. Fava bean is, of course, eaten many ways during that period for Sicily's patron saint. If San you Giuseppe. have any memories about fava, okay, or different recipes about fava that you'd like, we'd like to see them. Can you please put it in the comment section for us? Because I always am looking for different, <laughs> we different sure uses of uh, fava when, when, when you come here. That sounded like her, didn't it? <laughs> so much fun. Go ahead. All right. So we have the Trinacria pendants available. I'll be going back to the United States in a few weeks, and I'll be shipping them out. So if you're interested, message me, email me, or Alfred as well. 
we only have 20 of them and I think already six of them are gone. So beautiful Trinacria, of course, the symbol of Sicily. Okay, here's a question. What country influenced the Trinacria's design, Esther? The Greeks. Which Greeks, Esther? Gaetano, she Spart pulled? Spartans. The Spartans. That was part of this <laughs> Spartan shield that the Sicilians... Well, not country, Al. Empire. The Greek Empire. When Sicily was part of the Empire. That was a right, great but, conversation but with Gaetano, Gaetano Chipotle. We have a lot of good people. We had Rosario, Faraci, Roberto. We, as we're going to be bringing you little snippets of our interviews with people... Because we think that a good mix on these programs... Uh, yeah, I want to know what you guys want to hear more of. Did you like the recipe? Want to see more recipes? Let me know. I'm thinking of doing a spinach pie recipe I want to see soon. more recipes. You know why? Because she's going away for about seven weeks. And, you know, maybe I can figure out how to eat because I think I'm just <laughs> going to be eating tuna fish for six or the seven weeks. The freezer is stocked with <laughs> spinach pie, meat pie, hamburger hot dogs, all of Alfred's favorites. <laughs> You're <laughs> never going to have enough. That, no, listen, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for spending this time with us. Our prayers go to everyone around the world during these difficult times, and we'll see you on another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. In the meantime, make it a great day, everyone. Savannah Diga. Arrivederci. Peace. Ciao.